And our next guest uh, comes to us from the great city of Seattle. The Seattle-based blogger at Huffington Post, Daily Coast. Uh, he is a reporter for Free Speech Radio News. Uh, heard on the Pacifica Radio Network. And uh, it is great to have our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield back with us. Mark, how are you doing, my man? Good, Jeff. Good to talk to you again out of Boston. Hello to everybody in the, the fair city of Boston. And around the country, in uh, Florida and uh, Chicago and a lot of other places, too. But anyways, Mark, uh, here is um, uh, the news that uh, I've been handed here. Today is a big day when it comes to marijuana uh, in the uh, in the great city of Seattle. What is uh, uh, the reaction here uh, of um, the retail recreational marijuana stores? They're, they're open for the first time. Um, you know, Give me uh, what's actually happened last Monday. What is what has been the result over the last several days? Well, as you know, in 2012, the voters approved Initiative 502, which legalizes the recreational use of marijuana in Washington State. And the Washington State Liquor Control Board was given the responsibility of regulating the production, processing, and sale of cannabis. But it took quite a while for them to get their act together and figure out how to... Uh, how to regulate this substance. So what happened was on July 8th, 24 pot retailers were given licenses to open for business in Washington, and that's out of uh, a total of 334 license, licenses that will eventually be approved across the state. So in Seattle, the first pot retail business opened uh, called Cannabis City, a shop near downtown, and about 350 people lined up outside the door to get their legal pot, and one of the first purchasers was our own city attorney, Pete Holmes. The, uh, it was a big celebration in Seattle. A lot of people worked really hard on this issue for years to make this happen. Of course, we're a little bit behind Colorado, but we're catching up. The only issue we have now, Jeff, is that there is too much demand and too little supply. So I regret to inform uh pot uh, consumers in Seattle that there will be no legal marijuana available to them until July 21st because the only shop that was given a license so far has actually run out. So oh that's God. where we're at. There's a big <laughs> demand and not enough supply at the moment. But a huge story here. International media was covering it. And uh, it's an ongoing story. You know, we've got a lot of uh, states around the country uh, that are proposing this, including according to the Marijuana Policy Project, in 2014, there have been proposals in 18 different states and the District of Columbia to regulate marijuana the same way that alcohol and tobacco is regulated. So it's a big issue. It's got legs, and it's not going away. No doubt. And I want to get to the uh, the story that you also uh, um, have uh, given us uh, some to chew on uh, regarding the uh, the issue of the Seattle police and um, what is going on with Eric Holder and Seattle Mayor Murray. But before we get to that, I um, have you been in, in contact, or has been has there been a lot of contact between uh, the mayor of Seattle, the mayor of Denver, the governor of, of Washington State, Mr. Inslee, and the governor of Colorado, uh, Mr. Hickenlooper? Because obviously they did it uh, as well, and everybody has been focusing on Colorado. Of course, we all joked about the Super Bowl, one big uh, pot fest between Seattle and Denver last year, or earlier this year, but. Um, what a, what is Seattle and and the the state of Washington learning from Denver and Colorado? Has there been communication? Yes, although marijuana is still illegal on the federal level, Governors Jay Inslee and the Governor of Colorado are maintaining an open dialogue with U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder on this subject. So, uh, yes, there have been flights back and forth, a lot of consultation going on uh, right now in the state of Washington. It is legal for individuals over the age of 21 to possess up to one ounce of marijuana, but actually unlicensed growing of the plant is still illegal. And also, good news, the state is maintaining its medical marijuana program under a different set of rules because that was a concern. There were some state legislators who were uh, looking to do away with that program, but it looks like it's safe at the, at the moment. So, yes, there's a lot of uh, discussion, a lot of consultation going on back and forth. As I said, Colorado is a little bit ahead of us. Uh, they've had uh, legal retail pot available for, for a while now. Um, and Washington, we're trying to catch up. There's still a lot of licenses yet to be uh, given out. 
and, you know, it's going to be happening all across the state. There is one issue in Wenatchee, Washington, where the city council actually voted uh, an ordinance last October not to allow business licenses to pot retailers, claiming that, you know, it's because they are not adhering to federal law. But it looks like there's been a pushback on that, and there's a lot of discussion going on in Wenatchee to uh, overturn that ordinance and and make it available there as well. So, yeah, it's a, it's definitely, there's a lot of conversations going on, and Colorado definitely has set the pace for legal marijuana in the United States. And, by the way, there are 23 states across the country who have adopted a medicinal marijuana program, and 16 states, including the District of Columbia, have decriminalized the possession and use of the plant. So it's, You know, that's it's the, the big the thing for me. I mean... I mean, Mark, I mean, I think there, there may be a cultural uh, element here. The East Coast, maybe, and obviously the Midwest and the South, uh, probably uh, more conservative in terms of, of the use. But to me, the decriminalization is the important part here. Uh, you know, the idea of arresting people because they have a certain amount of pot on them is insane. Um, you know, I think that they're the educational part. I mean, personally, I don't smoke it. I don't smoke cigarettes either. And... Um, you know, I, I think that there should be a understanding of the health uh, benefits and detractions from it. Um, and, and But the idea of criminalizing everything, to me, is a Neanderthal approach to things. Uh, and um, has, has there been more people that have come out, uh, maybe older people, say those over 40 or so, uh, that have said, look, um, you know, the, the key part here is we've got to keep this idea from, uh, again, getting back to the Neanderthal right-wing legislators to, to basically say, hey, um, you know, we're, we're going we're, we're gonna to criminalize this because there's too much, uh, too much crime or whatever the case may be, which is not true. Where are they? Or, or is it sort of, look, it's free? It's uh, not free, you have to buy it, but uh, it, you're free to do what you want. What has been the approach there? in terms of how people look at this? Well, there is an editorial today in the Seattle Times, and it's a very uh, pro-legalization of marijuana. It's by Jonathan Martin, and he points out that between 2000 and 2010, more than 129,000 Washingtonians were arrested for simple possession of something that is now legal. The enforcement cost is estimated at $211 million dollars, and uh, it's, it's estimated also that Harvard economist Jeffrey Myron actually estimates that up to $14 billion a year could be saved nationwide by swapping prohibition for regulation. And that's, you know, so that's a big issue, too. Half of the inmates in federal position, uh, prisons, more than 100,000, are there for drug offenses. And, of course, there is um, the big issue of the fact that 44% of the defendants in Seattle, and this is from the Seattle City Attorney's Office, 44% of those defendants that were charged with possession were black and young. So in a city with a population of, you know, 8% African American, 44% were being uh, charged with possession of marijuana. So there's a lot of issues there that really need to be worked out. And it looks like in Seattle and in Washington State in general, uh, the move is definitely towards... uh, uh, a very liberalization of the uh, the use of marijuana. And also, it is very important that a lot of medicinal marijuana patients um, have that substance available because it has been very, very helpful for people with long-term sure, disabilities exactly. and dealing with pain. I think I just think that we need to, we need to look at this as, as sort of an educational opportunity as well as the idea that you can do this on your own. And I think... Uh, you know, the media makes a big thing of somebody getting high or they're stoned or whatever the case may be. But really what I think we need to do here is that, you know, if, you, if, it, if it works for you and medicinal marijuana does it, people should have access to it and shouldn't be, it should be part of people's uh, uh, insurance plans, uh, part of Obamacare. Uh, I know the right wing is going to freak out at that, but the fact is, is if it's helpful, it's helpful. Um, and if, you know, and if people do too much of anything, marijuana included, it can be harmful to your health, including lungs and so on and so forth. So there, there needs to be some educational process in this, but I think it's great that what Seattle is doing, and again, 16 other country, 16 other uh, states, municipalities are doing this well. I think every state should do it, and we should 
have it nationally. The idea of it um, in Washington, of course, is behind the day, behind the times. Um, D.C., that is. Washington, D.C. is clueless on where we should be going. All right. On another issue, unfortunately, it affects the African-American community, uh, probably more so than any other community. But the idea of police uh, and police abuse, uh, this goes on. We all know Rodney King. We all know uh, all, all the episodes. I return on television. And today, thankfully, with video cameras, people actually get this on video. Um, there is this back and forth between Holder and the police union, presumably, uh, the police department and uh, Seattle Mayor Murray. Give us the background on this, if you could. Well, actually, there is a lawsuit uh, that over 100 Seattle police officers have filed against U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder and our mayor in Seattle, our new mayor, Ed Murray. However, they are not represented by an attorney, and it is not the police guild, actually, that is behind this or the police department. These are individual officers. Yes. But we have a new police chief this month, her name is Kathleen O'Toole, who served as a Boston police commissioner from 2004 to 2006, and then was actually, for six years, chief inspector of Ireland's National Police. She also uh, initiated the, uh, some reforms with the Department of Justice in New Haven, Connecticut. So uh, at this point, she is trying to help uh, reform the Seattle Police Department. There was a consent decree uh, between the city and the Department of Justice to uh, reform this issue because there was an eight-month investigation by the Department of Justice that found that the Seattle Police Department has a practice and policy of using excessive force and also police profiling. So, unfortunately, there's a little bit of a, a backlash against these reforms. Um, some of the, the police officers have been dragging their feet for quite a while, and Ms. O'Toole is a little bit disappointed at, at the lack of cooperation that she's she's um, come up against, but this is an issue also that's not going to go away. It's been a long-term issue, um, goes all the way back uh, to the World Trade Organization protests here where there were, was a lot of police abuse, and also we had a 85-year-old Dorley Rainey who was pepper sprayed during the Occupy uh, oh, Wall Street event here. So a long-time issue in Seattle, uh, a lot of efforts to try to reform the police department, and this is just the last sort of... Uh, uh, element of intransigent, intransigent, I can't pronounce that word now. Yes, that's all right. You got it. <laughs> yes. Mark Taylor Canfield, uh, always, always great having uh, you on the program. I get it. Thank you, my friend. We got to run, but uh, always appreciate your update. Let's talk soon. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Keep up the good work. We're listening in Seattle.